Uh, hello guys, welcome to this uh, video. So in this video, we will look at a new JavaScript compiler, which is called as ESBuild. It's a great alternative to Webpack. It's really fast. You can just see on the documentation, it is showing that it's a fast JavaScript bundler and compiler, faster than Webpack parcel. So they claim that it's fast. And also I personally used it and I actually got faster build times. So I will show you how to set this up. So we will be using in this tutorial how to set up TypeScript. I will be using TypeScript instead of JavaScript. TypeScript is a super set of JavaScript with additional features. And for the CSS, we will be compiling SAS. So it will be a simple project. You can also integrate with React, View, any front-end framework, but we will be taking a very simple example of HTML right in the browser. We will be compiling this TypeScript and SAS to actual JavaScript and CSS. This is actually a command which is there, npm run build. So this will actually run this, this command under the hood, which is node esbuild config.js. So we actually define this configuration file for esbuild. So here it got all these options. And now if I run this file, if you see, if you run this command right here, npm run build. So just see on the left hand side, a public folder will be created. And you can just see the build process was really fast. And I personally used Webpack in before, but I got faster build speeds. So it is a little bit faster. And if you see, we got this index.html. We got the main.css, which is completely minified as well. So it is better for performance. We also got the source map files as well. We got the J minified JS and uh, this is a mapped file. So you can directly open this project with the live server. This is extension. So current time it is 614. So we are actually using a third party Node.js module, which actually is called as date FNS. So we are using this third party module inside of our application. It converts this to a common JS now so that we can directly use it in the browser. And it also comes with the development server. If you want to run it locally, you will run npm run dev. So what it will do, it will actually make use of node mode. So after you make any sort of changes inside of any of the files, SAS files, JavaScript, TypeScript files, or any files, it will automatically reload. So what it will see, if I change any of these background color in the SAS file, let's suppose this is actually the background color. So if I try to change this one, if I make any sort of change, it will recompile this application without having to again type this command. You can just see hot reload functionality will be there. So this makes it really easy while you are developing your code. A real time live preview will be there. You can just add any TypeScript code as well right here. Let's suppose if I write uh, alert statement. So it will get compiled and you will see that now it is refreshing. So let's start this video and you can find the full source code. The link is given in the description. You can find my GitHub repo and clone that. So what I will do, I will simply make a new directory, which is esbuild example. And I will open it inside VS code. So currently it is empty. We do need to define a package.json file for this. So npm init dash y. So this will create the package.json file with the default options. Now we need to install it as a dev dependency, which is this yes build. This is a base compiler and the bundler, module bundler. So quite a few dependencies we need to install it right here. So there is some packages, plugins available for this yes build. One such plugin is uh, the SAS plugin, which automatically pre-compiles your SAS files into CSS. So esbuild dash sash that plugin. And then we are esbuild similarly for compiling SAS. This plugin is also required esbuild dash post CSS. And also we require auto prefixer. So this is actually used for compiling your TypeScript as well. Auto prefixer. And we also need the CSS Nano, which is actually used for compiling SAS into CSS. So these three modules are required, CSS Nano, ESBuild Post CSS, ESBuild SAS plugin. So these three modules and just enter it. 
So this will actually install inside the dev dependency section. So it is not required for production. So once you deploy your application, these dependencies are only required during the development phase. So once they are installed, it will list in the dev dependency section. So in the meantime, we can create a source folder. You can see the dependencies are installed. We also need the TypeScript dependency because we are compiling TypeScript. So just add this base TypeScript package in the dev dependencies. So right here in the temp source folder, we will define template.html where we will writing the HTML code. And then we will have a style folder. Inside this, we will have our SAS file. Similarly, inside this, we will now be having the main.js file, sorry, TypeScript, not JavaScript here. So we need to rename this to TypeScript. So inside this, uh, we also need a config file for esbuild. So esbuild.config.js. So you can just see the icon is changed to esbuild. ES code recognizes. So right in this file, we do need to require all these packages that we have installed. esbuild. We need to require it. Then we need this SAS plugin. So this will be coming from the esbuild SAS plugin dependency. Then we need to actually do the post CSS plugin. This is also required for compiling SAS. So this will be coming from esbuild post CSS. Then we have the auto prefixer that we installed. So we need to require it auto prefixer. Then we also need to import the CSS nano. This is also required for compiling SAS into CSS. And then we will import the file system and the path module which is built in inside Node.js. So these are all the packages we have required and now we actually need to write the function which will actually build this application. So esbuild actually contains a function which is build function. So this function actually takes some parameters. So the first parameter it takes is the entry point. Entry point simply means that which, which files you need to compile. So our main file is located in the source directory and it is actually the TypeScript file. So main.ts. So put a comma. This is not an array, this is an object. So just make it an object right here. So entry points, you can have multiple entry points as well. But for a basic configuration, I'm just showing you this is actually the main file which will get compiled main.ts. And the second option is the build option. So, sorry, bundle option. So this needs to be a Boolean parameter. So I will set it to true. Minify, if you want the code to be minified, set it to true. If you also need the source map in the dist folder, you will put true here. And out directory simply means that in which directory you need to create. So I will create a public directory, output directory where all the files will be there. Then we have the plugins property. So here you will actually provide all your plugins which we installed. First we will be providing the SAS plugin which will be used for compiling SAS into CSS. Then we will be providing the post CSS plugin which we imported at the very top. And this actually takes some options. This takes an object of plugins again. And here we need to provide two plugins, which is auto prefixer and CSS nano. These are all used for compiling SAS into CSS. So after this, uh, put a comma, it takes some more options, extract option to be true. It's a Boolean parameter extract to true and minimize. If you want your CSS to be minimized or minified, you will put it to true. So that's all that we need to have in the plugin section. So just put a comma and then we got our loader. Loader simply is actually, if you want to compile your TypeScript files into JavaScript, we use loaders. So we will be using .ts for TypeScript. 
and it can even be have if you are building it with react chairs it can be types ts6 so in that case we will be saying tsx so we are handling both the scenarios here so that's all that we need to do and it returns a promise so we can handle this promise by dot then so we can just console log a simple message that build completed so now we also need to compile that uh, html template as well so we will be defining a function right here copy html template this is a custom function so right at the top so this function will actually required for for copying the html template that we will define it in in this template html this is will be a very basic html document so you will simply say yes built example so let me just write a very basic html document click me and we have given an id to it so in the style css code we can simply define two variables primary color which will be black and the text color will be white so now the body here will be background color to be primary color and let's suppose i give a button or i can just uh, give it a heading color should be white and it should be appearing in the center position so these are my sas styles right here so color i can dynamically put right here to be text color not this is the advantage of using sas we have variables then we inside typescript file we can actually use any third party module of node js let me use lodash which is a very popular package inside node js so we are installing third party module now we can simply import the lodash package like this so we can use any function of lodash so you can say one such function is there which is the chunk function so here we have the array here you can divide it by 2 so this we can console log so we have defined the type script code sas code and the html code now in the html in this es build config js file in this copy html template function we actually need to write this logic so i basically discussed this logic in the last video as well so in this we are simply let me paste this code and explain to you what is happening so this code is responsible for embedding dynamically the css and the javascript links whenever we deploy the application by compiling it by es build so what this is doing is that is actually first of all providing the template path which is located inside source slash template html then we are providing the output path which will be created under the public index.html file and then inside that template we are reading that template so whatever is the content inside template html we are reading it by this fs function read file sync and then whatever is the content we are adding a dynamic link tag which is main.css so because the compilation after compilation the name of the css and the javascript file will be main css and main js so we are adding this dynamically so after you do this inside your package.json file you need to add a script section so what you will do you will add a build script and here you will simply write uh, write node es build config js so what this is will do it will actually execute this uh, file dynamically whenever we 
now let me just say npm run build so hopefully it will create a folder uh, let me see it is saying cannot find module uh, let me see node es built config js sorry sorry es build dot config dot js not so again run this command and hopefully it will create a public folder on the left hand side after compilation is done so the very first time it will take some time for the compilation you can see build is complete we got a message and we got this directory it contains the html code and the javascript code but it doesn't contain the sas code so i think the map file you can see it is generated and in the index word we got the main css and we got this main js but uh, oh sorry we forgot to include this file sas file in the typescript we do need to include this so this is our main file so we need do need to include the sas file we just include this and again do this process so now you will see it is really fast it basically for the very first time if you compile it it will take some time but after those compilations it will not take a lot of time so now we got the css as well so if you try to run this file in the browser simply open with live server now you can see the app is running and if i check the inspect element go to console you can just see lodash function is correctly executing and it is compiled Uh, printed out the result it actually cut the array into three parts and we are actually using a third party node js module you can just see by using this import statement inside typescript file so all this typescript code was compiled into a understandable code which is understandable by the browser so we can add some more typescript code let me add this uh, sample code that i have so depending upon your application you can just using this thing you can make your own application so this you need to do it for the very first time after you make your projects so let me paste this typescript code so it will have all the features that typescript supports you can just see type checking you will see at the time of declaring a variable we actually you can see let message of type string so in javascript these uh, we can't do like this so it is typescript so at the time of declaring a variable we exactly tell this variable type so if you let suppose if i at this moment i give a numeric value i will typescript compiler will just show me because this variable is of type string so number is not assignable so this is the advantage of using typescript because at the time of compilation you get exactly pinpoint errors while in javascript you don't get this advantage so that's why we use typescript in most of the projects so if i just rebuild this file if i try to again npm run build so it is saying that uh, build failed will with could not resolve oh sorry let me just remove this so build is completed and uh, you can just see all these console log statements will be there hello typescript count 42 active so this is actually all the typescript code is we have declared a interface we have declared a enum so all these things we have declared we are console logging it so this was a thing guys and now i just want to add a development script so that if i make any sort of change i don't want to uh, again and again doing the same command so we can add a development script so here we can make use of nodemon so you can install nodemon locally as a dev dependency so install it so it will get added nodemon 
so the advantage of using node more is that if your application changes it actually adds so what i will do i will just copy the command and just show you what this does so essentially what this command does it listens for all the changes that you done so we actually define all these files javascript sorry javascript typescript html sas file so if any sort of changes are done in the, in these files then we execute this command once again node es build config js so this is actually the build command so instead of running npm run build we will run npm run dev so now it will start listening for any sort of changes so you can just see so let's suppose if i make any sort of change if i go to a sas file if i change the background color to a red color so once again the script will execute and the build process will you can see automatically the application is refreshed so in this way we can configure es build guys to actually compile typescript project with sas in no time so this was a very good example if you need this source code you can go to this description i have given the github repo where you can find out all this code thank you very much for watching this video and i will be seeing you in the next one thank you very much